Hi, my name is Robert, and you're watching That's the Movie. So today I'll be reviewing Horrible Bosses 2. Horrible Bosses 2 is a sequel to Horrible Bosses, obviously. It stars Jason Sudeikis, Jason Bateman, and Charlie Day. They reprise the roles as their, uh, I don't even know their names anymore. That's weird. Most comedy movies, I forget their names, unless it's like, you know, nah, I don't remember it. I don't. Anyways, they're the same guys from the first movie. And this time around, they've become their own bosses and tried creating their own company. And they're looking for investors, and coincidentally, the investor they run into is Christoph Waltz and his son, Chris Pine. So, he decides, you know, to fund them and everything, quote-unquote fund them, and kind of screws them out of their product and their money, and they decide to, um, you know, exact their revenge by kidnapping his son and holding him for ransom. So, it's more of the same, really, from the first movie. Um, it was... You know, I thought it was a bit more funnier than the first one. I felt like I was laughing a lot more. But it's still pretty much the same thing. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Because, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I still and I still liked it. But I can really see how a lot of people will not... You know, a lot of people think it's it wasn't that great or, you know, much of improvement. Because it was pretty much the same movie. Just, you know, a few different jokes. But that's it. And, uh, yeah. And one other complaint I had with this movie is that Christoph Waltz was not even utilized to his potential. Like, you barely saw him in his movie. And the time that he was on there, he was hardly that funny. It was more, I guess, just a straight man character. But still, he just wasn't really... He just didn't... I don't know, I feel like they didn't use him like they did Kevin Spacey in a previous movie. Or, or Colin Farrow, or, or uh, Jennifer Aniston, who was fantastic in that movie and in this one, too. She steals the show every time she's on screen. But I just felt like, you know, Christoph Waltz was kind of wasted. Chris Pine did a great job in this movie, too. I really enjoyed him, too, cause he, as the villain, and he was fantastic to watch, and I liked that, but it's, I still felt like they weren't using Christoph Waltz. Like, Kevin Spacey had more screen time than he did, and he wasn't even the main villain in this movie. In fact, he wasn't even a villain in this movie at all. He was just a guy that would yell, yell abuse at the main characters. Uh, one other thing I had with this movie is also that... The characters of, you know, Charlie Day and Jason Sudeikis, you know, were more relatable in the first movie. Like, they feel like real guys who were just stuck in really stupid situations and, you know, weren't the smartest of guys and it kind of screwed up every now and then. But, you know, they, I still felt like they, I could relate to them. In this movie, they just felt like plain idiots. Like, everything they were doing was just to get a laugh. And I, I know I, it was fairly obvious, at least for me, I noticed that they were just trying to be funny instead of just being funny or letting the situation, you know, be funny. And, yeah, it just kind of pulled me out of it, but I still enjoyed it, irregardless if I just, you know, forgot about that. And Jason Bateman the whole time felt more, like, serious and more of the straight man than originally in the first movie. But still, you know, I, I like them. They're all really fantastic comedic actors. And uh, Sean Anders, who directed this movie, did some pretty creative stuff with this movie. I, I really I really enjoyed it, especially with the cinematography and editing, which is fantastic. I just I just really liked it. It surprised me a few times. And I was like, wow. It was a really it was a really good choice to, you know, not go with Seth Gordon the second time around. I mean I'm not saying he did a bad job with the first movie. I'm just saying that this guy did a better job, you know, directing wise with this movie. But you know, in the end, this movie's not a perfect movie. I already explained, you know, what I thought was wrong with it. And I'm sure there's much more things wrong with it other people will will find wrong with it. But it's still a very, you know, fun movie. It's a good, fun co comedy movie, a comedic movie. I mean, if you enjoyed the first one, you're going to love this movie. And even if you didn't enjoy the first one, you're going to still love this movie because that's just the type of movie it is. It's just a movie that everyone will love. They will laugh at it because it's not, you know really dumb comedy like, I don't know, Dumb and Dumber 2, but it's it's also smartly written and kind of, and really, really fun to watch. And yeah, so I do recommend people go check out this movie. It was um, a really, a really fun time for me. So anyways, you guys can follow me on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook at the Real Robert H, and on Instagram at Robert Alfonso Hidalgo. And you can like our Facebook pages, That's the Movie and the Marina Show. There's a really good way to keep up to date with our stuff. And also our app on Google Play and Blackberry World. It's, you know, download it and poof, really good way to keep up with, to date with our stuff. And also go on our website, thesashramunashow.com, and find out, uh, you know, more information on our podcast that we have, uh, 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's just me and Sasha talking about movie news. So, yeah, uh, that's the movie. Nightcrawler is, is a movie Night star Night is, is, uh, stars Jake Gyllenhaal, and, and it's Sam about Rocker. a guy who's been looking for a career uh, and a job, and he just wants something to like,